change uh, and of course to to get this prediction you need to translate this transmission cycle into this uh, complicated mathematical model and the parameterized model and not a uh, detailed dirt, uh, statistic analysis of the parameters to uh, some of the data to observe. But this is not enough. To refine this prediction, we have to consider mobility. Suppose the chick population, you know, I think chick does not move. The chick can be moved at birth. And also have to consider the mobility of animal hosts. Okay? And you also need to consider the heterogeneity <coughs> of the environment and I think the complication is the variation of genetic strains. I don't want to get into detail. Again, this is one of the disease that we're trying to study now. And then come to the top priority of the project, epidemic propagation of West Nile virus. And most of you probably know this is a disease uh, that can be maintained in the mosquito door communities. The mosquito can get infected if the mosquito is taking strong meal from the bird, or the bird can be infected, bitten by the infected mosquito. So it can be transmitted, it can be maintained in the bird mosquito uh, cycle, but it can also be transmitted to humans and <coughs> other mammals in particular the horses. Some of the intervention strategies are highly relevant to the biological cycle of mosquitoes. We have two major strategies on the dog side to kill the dog mosquito holes to try to prevent the lava mosquito to grow. And as I said, this is top one priority for a couple of reasons. First of all, because in 19, since 1999, this disease become a public health issue. It's one of the major issues. Uh, sometimes very quiet, sometimes could be very uh, 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 the infection could be very serious. And this expansion of West Nile virus has motivated the creation of major surveillance systems in different uh, provinces in Ontario, in Quebec, in Manitoba, in Alberta, and so on and so forth. Those surveillance systems seem to be very well uh, designed. It can, for example, reach the online geographic representation of the field data. Unfortunately, those surveillance data cannot do the prediction, especially they cannot forecast the spread of virus in the future under different assumptions. And therefore, uh, it's in high demand from a public health agency to have a system that can predict and can permit the use of preventative measures to be enforced at the right moment and at the right level of expected risk. So our objective for this particular disease is really to design a system that can simulate the behaviors of population mosquitoes and birds, which are involved in the propagation of transmission of the West Nile virus, and the simulation should be done in a virtual catalogic environment representing the virologic territory, and also corresponding to different assumptions about climate changes and uh, uh, different intervention strategies. And the geosimulation should allow us to simulate the behaviors of the actors and act interaction in a virtual geographic environment. And the challenge is huge. Firstly, the continuous battle between the simplicity of the model, whatever model, whatever science you're talking about, mathematical model or geosimulation model, there is tremendous difficulty and, and the battle between the simplicity model and the complexity in the real phenomena. And adding to the complexity is, even though we have very sophisticated surveillance system across Canada, there are many data that uh, we would like to have, especially mathematicians that like have, are not available. And as I said, um, it is modeling, uh, which we are trying to do with, is <coughs> say, George, Funded project always involve two domains. One is local dynamics, the interaction of the birds and mosquitoes in a particular geographic region, and then the mobility of the both the birds and mosquitoes. How the local dynamics and mobility interact with each other to generate the spatial temperature pattern. 
So in terms of local dynamics, luckily in Canada there are multiple groups from Aveta, from Central Petit Modeling, from the MyTech funded project. We have a, a relatively um, credible mathematic model to understand the local dynamics of the infection birds and mosquitoes in given region. What we're trying to do is to add spatial consideration. Okay, and the reason this became the top priority of the Jolly project is because of the convergence of different technologies. So we feel it is possible to design a geosimulation pool to be used by the public health decision makers. And one of the major challenges that the group at the University of Hawaii is trying to do is building the visual based application so that we can curl all the geo reference data. There are multiple modules involved in this uh, 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 simulation package. I don't want to get into detail. Again, um, it's an indication of the success of the second phase of the journey. Uh, the, also, the uh, integration of a MITEX or a mathematical oriented project team and the geosimulation team. We have a preliminary revision of the uh, geosimulation package. Uh, Primary tries in terms of in terms of Quebec uh, surveillance system. We are really trying to bring the system to Ontario. Uh, this will be our second stage. Um, I would like to say a couple of things, uh, words about the team. We really have uh, expertise from different domains. We have people from geographer Professor Demi Chang is really the leader of the project. We have mathematical modelers, we have people from emergency medicine, from computer science from microbiology, from earth science, uh, from public health agencies of Canada, in technology, along with of flat creatures, and uh, again, <coughs> to emphasize, uh, we have multiple partners in this project, and we are indeed working for uh, uh, leadership from OC, uh, support for industries, and uh, this is also a project working for applications of the geosimulation.